Hello, everyone. This is um, Denise Anderson and Craig Connick from Kane University, the Michael Graves College. And we're here to present our presentation on design and architecture students envision the post COVID built environment. This project started in, uh, this is a year long project, 2021. And it is part of a university wide initiative. And this is uh, the design schools uh, portion, design and architecture school portion of it. So the project was, objective was to utilize the expertise areas of architecture, graphic design, industrial, interior design, to research the pandemic's effect on people and public spaces and propose design strategies to improve communities. Uh, again, we were in remote learning in 2021. This was an eight week project. Uh, we met weekly and students worked together to identify how architecture and design can envision the post COVID environment. And we took, undertook, uh, we have a child care center on campus and that was our first project that we decided to take with our interdisciplinary team of interior designers, industrial designers and architects. And for graphic design, they took on this idea that a lot of the processes and communications of what it is, the methodology of what they have to do at the child care center to be safe, made them fun and, and easy and informative. Our interior design students, architecture students, uh, our architecture students looked at the play areas, the outdoor play areas and ways to maybe transform them to make outdoor classroom spaces. And our, in, our interior design students uh, designed unique furniture that could be uh, arranged in multiple ways to, to ensure social distancing and still be able to do instruction in the classroom. And I think one of our most fun industrial design solutions was to try to make the temperature reader that is put up to your forehead that can be a little bit frightening, actually shaped a bit like a pistol into something more fun with uh, animal shapes and ears that students, uh, young students would, would enjoy. So in the summer, we continued our project, Craig and I into a smaller team. It was just graphic design and architecture students. And we further developed the designs for the child care center. Uh, but when the child care center did not have funding to implement them, we then investigated two specific areas that were hit hardest by the pandemic. One was special needs education and uh, mental health uh, for people. So what we learned after the summer, after the project, is that our students were kind of frustrated with a lack of funding and they were continually overwhelmed by the societal changes uh, that were happening due to the pandemic. Uh, they also missed a larger group collaboration because they had, it was just the two of them and, and their two professors. And they were really indecisive on an area to develop because the summer project was to develop an actual sort of solution like we did for the child care center. But instead, uh, what we did, uh, the students wrote a research paper. And then came the fall. And this is when we returned in person. And we asked students about their personal experiences in lockdown and observations around and the world around them. And in my identity course, I assign a social design project each, uh, each fall. And I asked the students, I gave them the opportunity that if they wanted to select a topic related to COVID, they could. And what was happening in the other sort of areas of uh, in our college in architecture, interior and industrial design, students were taking it upon themselves to actually incorporate COVID related um, issues in their projects. And so what happens when students came back before they began that fall semester in person? They shared with us that they felt isolated, um, that they missed the lack of group collaboration, and that many transfer students after a year and a half uh, were just stepping on campus for the first time ever. So I'm gonna walk you through just a couple of uh, four solutions in graphic design. And one of our students was how to create a the problem a transfer students, create a, uh, a smoother transition for first year transfer students. And it was to create a transfer student club. Um, we had a student who was Puerto Rican and her family was in Puerto Rico and she was trying to find a way to connect Puerto Rican and US citizens to provide resources as a result of Hurricane Maria and COVID. And then there was a student who uh, had a, 
project called Human Beings and how to educate people on undocumented immigrants as a result of COVID-19. So what she did was celebrated uh, immigrants and all of their wonderful contributions. And lastly, we had a student who wanted to educate adolescents on anti-Semitism as a result of COVID-19 because it was really rampant on social media. And so she had a campaign to raise awareness of anti-Semitism. And in the design areas, uh, the other designs in the industrial design, we had a Christian who designed this at home ventilator air purifier that was also had a decor uh, that it could be accommodated rather than looking like an alien object. Then John Gregg in the architecture school looked at demographics of um, income, in income inequality, as well as places of where high pollution is in New York City and proposed a housing complex that uh, purifies on a larger level the air that would be breathed in that complex housing complex. Kim Wheeler, uh, also industrial design, designed this uh, Opal home healthcare monitor to be much more user-friendly. And lastly, Nicole Duncan tried to rethink the office uh, post-pandemic to accommodate the distancing and safety and have them integrated so that they looked normal and not as something added on. In summary, um, I, we just want to, there's a quote from one of our students who was on our research project, is that students use this project to help empower them um, to help others and also to be part of the solution for the next pandemic. Thank you. Thank you very much.